have um, been telling the people, particularly of late, which we've been telling people for years, uh, because they're being forced to admit it, that the United States is a private foreign trafficking corporation. And the problem that you have with the instrumentalities, the bottom re instruments that they have been uh, perpetrating um, uh, against the world in order to create what they would call a reserve currency operations on fungible uh, bond systems issued for mainly from 55 Water Street, et cetera, are at the heart of their uh, U.S. Treasury bond system that has been the foundation of creating what they know or what you've been hearing as the uh, U.S. reserve currency uh, operations, which is in dire straits right now, because as we have told you, uh, in the last seven or so years, we've reminded you that uh, that there would become a feedback loop, which you're seeing right now, where the rest of the world, due to the fact of the criminality, and it has damaged so many nation states, that um, that they have decided to come together to counter Rome's um, army, etc., and um, resist certain trade um, operations with the U.S. corporation in order to bankrupt some areas of it, uh, which are all controlled actually from the Vatican. So when you're talking about any um, corporate entity or operations operating in what is known as the Western Hemisphere, which does not necessarily mean what you'll call geographical territory, but is loosely used to refer to, as an example, England, um, the United States, Canada, uh, Australia, etc. All of these are re referenced as rep as Western, uh, the Western world. But what that implies is we're actually Occidental breed or the hybrid breed of Europeans who have been operating the uh, European hegemony operations uh, for these last couple of centuries, which has been come to be known uh, with this cover title referred to as white supremacy. Uh, which is a cover for uh, European hegemony operations. And this is, again, why it's also important for you to not forget that one of the uh, continued operations um, of, of the Inquisition uh, uh, execution has always been, always been, and write this down so you don't forget it, to do all of their injuries to other people doing it in someone else's name and doing it in someone else's identity. So one of the problems that we have is our people not only having a limited knowledge about and who they themselves are, they also have a limited knowledge of these other people who have been imposturing as them themselves and also as government, etc. However, these are uh, social, political, economic realities that, uh, though uncomfortable for many people, must be taken in consideration so that we can better be better equipped mentally and spiritually to come together harmonically and to begin to shed the, the grip, the iron hand grip of Rome on the Canaanite, Moabite peoples, etc., commonly known as Chemites. Hamatites, etc., um, uh, in order to fix our house. And uh, uh, the other thing that um, uh, you are to take into consideration, that many people who know this real history um, will deliberately uh, uh, divert from it under the idea that we can do these little clubs and create new nations, etc., when the fact of the matter is you can't. You must fix the nation. The nation already exists. Or you have the problem where so many of our people want to be the chief. And so this is where you see a lot of the operative schisms all across the land where uh, people take on executive titles, etc., of the ancient world, which in their, in, their, in their reality, those titles belong to us. However, the, re the political reality is, is that until the people are conscious to a certain level, they themselves will not shed Rome, even though they have been traditionally, by customs, told 
in many formats, whether in um, in Hebrew operations, what you call Hebrew Hebrew operations, or or under so-called uh, Coptic Christian operations, and then Orthodox Christian operations, and then uh, Protestant Christian operations, and then uh, Muslim operations, all saying um, that to render under Caesar what is Caesar's, and that has become a um, a an, an established and common uh, presentment from a moral political perspective in the civil world for almost all the peoples on the planet, even people who are not necessarily uh, what you would re refer to as religious oriented people. These are fundamental principles. However, uh, that has become a common statement, but it, it, it is often not examined by the people because they're not aware that the people who have been governing us are essentially Roman Curia members. And then we seek a remedy of the problems that they are creating. We go to them and into their uh, de facto jurisdictions seeking remedy. And this is where over the years um, you have always seen we take the position of notifying them or making claim of right and not appealing to them or applying to them knowing, because this is the fact, that they will uh, dance you around in circles for years and frustrate you and economically drain your resources and then still not give you remedy because they're operating from the perspective that most of our people don't know that they are de facto and that they're in, uh, imposters and they're not the real Saba people, that they are imposters, absolutely. And this is why once in a while when we talk about Septuaginta and uh, the Bible will refer to people, John 8, 44. And if you don't forget that, you'll know what we're saying. Because uh, you also know that as soon as you start telling the truth, they start sanctioning people because they don't want the people to come out of the false narrative control systems of the mind control systems that they've adopted under the animal husbandry training uh, under the guise of education adopted from the studies of Sigmund Freud, uh, which are adopted into all of your school systems under the Western Hemisphere. And of course, many of our uh, natural peoples of the land um, uh, attempt to use the adopted education systems of uh, Freud in order to solve problems, and then we keep going or walking back into the hole of false jurisdictions. And then we uh, continuously uh, are experiencing men and women who will, who will uh, arise and want to create a new nation rather than heal the nation that's here. Uh, as if they're going to create a, another um, territorial jurisdiction of aggregate land and then be left at peace to execute the rightful moral ethical operations of ancient Canaan African people, i.e. sometimes referred to uh, under the cover of the true Jew, etc., etc., of these people of the Western Hemisphere who have been trained under animal husbandry that human beings are crayons, like green people and purple people and light-skinned, orange-skinned black people, and it doesn't matter what color you are. When you hear that kind of language, you already know that you're dealing with the mind control systems that was adopted under the uh, mentalism operations of human uh, subjugation uh, coming from the studies of the brain, et cetera, and human responses uh, under Sigmund Freud which is where they get the animal husbandry uh, methodologies adopted into the educational systems, particularly of the General Education Board, which we reminded you all continuously over the years to read the philosophy page of the General Education Board 1902. Uh, and as you know, and this is again, this stuff is redundant, but I think again, and it becomes obvious that because we get so tied up with the miseries and the injuries that are being hoisted upon us, that a lot of times we keep looking for something new when the truth doesn't come in versions. It is what it is. And you need to understand and have a comprehension and an understanding and an overstanding of what the injury is that has happened to us, what got us to where we are today, 
in order to unravel the yarn of evil that has permeated on the planet and, and also have a, an insight into um, the operations that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, that many of the people that they've trusted that have been calling themselves government, government agencies, politicians, preachers, rabbis, imams, preachers, etc., from all of the branches of all your so-called major religions, many of them are in actuality by choice devil worshippers and Satanists, and they choose the dark side of doing things, but they uh, gain the people's trust by always hiding behind uh, phrases like Jesus, Muhammad, etc., Confucius, etc., and yet they have been so successful because the people have not suspected that the Satanists were actually uh, dominating all the major world's religions. And this is, again, why when many people begin to do some study, they start condemning religion, not comprehending the fact that the masses haven't been getting religion anyway. They've been getting dogmata. And so religion has been charged with evil with many people when it's not the religion, it's actually those who have taken over and corrupted religion, etc. And this has again to do with even the ancient Babylonian symbolisms, etc., that many of them use and put a negative spin on when actually most of them are actually positive and in harmony with nature. But yet when our, pardon me, when our people see many of the symbols, they're given a demonic or negative connotation and our people shy away from them. Or if they go into it, they are guided by the dark priesthood going into the negative uh, uh, energy in their operations. Not unlike uh, when they do um, sacrificing of little people, that they even use it in the um, situations that they are putting in people's arms, etc. That's part of their um, Satanist rituals, etc., uh, to contaminate people. Um, so I'm going to go also in, uh, as we talked about earlier, into a state so that you can keep in mind what most of you already know. But again, this is a reminder. Much of this information are for people who are awakening to the corruption because the injuries that are being hoisted upon humanity are more and more open and more blatant. And so many of the people, are their ears are more open now because they're receiving extreme pain on many uh, levels. They're losing their children to these Satanist sacrificers, etc. And it's confusing many of people because they thought these people were government i.e. their protectors who they're paying taxes to, etc. And, and they're finding out, although they're reluctant to accept it, that these people are really uh, exploiting feeders and they are vampire in their character, both politically and in their uh, nature of operations with other humans. Can you, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Can you take questions before they roll away, especially if yes. they're in line with... Here, this is a question... Um, because you're talking about nations and so forth for healing the nation. Um, cons, I'm just going to put it, Islam, Dr. G, can Taj talk on Empress Ninti of North Carolina on charter also being the true monarch? See, this is, this is what I'm presenting to you. I don't, I try to avoid getting in personal because there's many people that are claiming their right of empresship and a uh, right of um, um, sultan and um, emperor. you got about three or four or five or six different people around the land who claim to be emperor. You've got the same thing with um, uh, different uh, uh, um, brothers and sisters. And it doesn't mean that they don't have right of a state. But this is one of the things that I'm presenting even with this uh, request for healing, is that we should be more concerned with the work that needs to be done and that the titles, for the most part, are not so much important. It is the work that needs to be done. As an example, and this is not, you know, a, an issue of ego, myself, I have actually about three absolute titles that I could use or that I would use based on actual structured operations over the years, but I don't use them because I don't take the position 
that uh, a broken nation, we should act like uh, we're in sovereign control when we're actually not. And the issue is, is that we need to fix our people because the sovereignty is divine, is not politically given, and is not decided because you, me, or anyone else decides uh, in recognition of the corruption of the history that all of a sudden uh, we are the emperor or the empress or the sultan, etc., or the emir of a territory. And it doesn't mean that some of these titles are not used lawfully and rightfully in what you would call your territorial jurisdictions under your provinces uh, organized by the people, which you have the right to do, absolutely. <clears throat> However, my concern is that it's more important not so much for the uh, titles to be held by people, but that the people who have this knowledge should be more concerned with healing the people in the nation because you cannot take a people of a broken nation and actually constructively build or maintain or sustain those things necessary for national institutional operations. And this is one of the reasons why uh, over the years and over the generations, you will see uh, many um, men and women uh, approach the healing of the nation by uh, being more concerned with taking on titles as if the power is in the title, when in fact the power, the power actually is in the people. And if you don't fix the people, those positions, you know, they are never successful. And I think a lot of times when people get caught up, uh, and I'm not condemning, I'm just being honest about this, uh, in the imagery that's portrayed, um, and as a matter of fact, over the years, in particularly in the most recent years, many of you who know me over the years uh, have seen in these most recent years, I've had uh, less tendency to wear my fezes and or my kufis. And many people have questioned that. And the real deal is um, I'm in the field. I'm in, down in the dirt with the people. And I think, for, as for me, it's not for everyone else. None of the garb makes you. Your bloodline and your pedigree makes you. The work makes you. And I think a lot of times when people see you in your, uh, like, sorry, Moorish uh, uh, costumes with your pantaloons, because I've also had many, uh, many of you who've known me over years, uh, custom costumes and uh, pantaloons, etc., and boleros, uh, Moorish, that were very, very, very uh, expensive and very well made, etc. But people have a tendency to be distracted by them and also get into this psychology of, of trying to lift people up or make you um, this image of royalty, etc. And I'm offended by that because to me, the royalty are the people themselves and particularly those who are less conscious of their pedigree and bloodline. And I think anybody that's a soldier in the war for uh, restoring the nation should be more concerned in fixing the house than uh, projecting an image. It doesn't mean that you hold information back, but it's sort of like uh, you, you know, uh, someone uh, egotistically sitting on the throne and then you have a bunch of corrupted people that you're calling the nationals or the citizenry and half of them are still corrupted because their minds have not been cleaned and they have not done their shadow work because they don't know the real history. And then you have many of them that still keep thinking that these hybrid Europeans who are claiming to be Americans are actually the sovereigns and have the only uh, right to claim to be sovereigns of the land under the title of white people, which is a status and also sovereign of the land. And they have a tendency to walk back and forth into political jurisdictions that they don't belong in. in and they think that uh, the political jurisdictions are distanced when jurisdiction and foreign does not mean distance. And so you have a constant confu confusion that arises among the people because you have people moving more in many times in many areas on emotion and not on the knowledge of who they are and by the spirit of that knowledge, therefore beginning to heal and then having more capacity to heal others around them. And then we come together as a collective whole by nature not by some artificial means because when people have a knowledge of who they really are and how they got to where they are you don't need to convince them anymore 
their level of knowledge is no longer uh, predicated in what they believe. It becomes what they know. And a man and a woman who knows themselves is less apt to be enslaved or suppressed uh, than one who just believes or adopts something because they want to be a part of a club or part of an organization in the guise of being a nation when the nation is out there and it's all of the people of Canaanite, Moabite, descent, etc., who have been branded uh, by these tags, Negro, Black, Colored, Indian, etc., and many of whom uh, are not even aware of why we were called Indians or the history of that, etc., while those designations have been applied to the ancient Canaanite Moabites, that is really not the pedigree names of the people, etc. And these subtleties that actually have a great um, impact on the legal and lawful status of the people is often not taken in consideration or addressed because they don't want to lose the attention of the people and they want to keep them in this uh, so-called follower mentality uh, paying uh, tithing and dues, dues, etc. And on the long run, there's nothing fixed because the components of the nation are not fixed. So not unlike if you have a storm come along and do damage to your house, you must fix what's broken. You don't necessarily tear your house up and then dig all the land up and throw the land somewhere because you're not going to remake, remake the plots of land that is your inherited estate. You may rebuild on it, or you may repair that which is on it. Likewise, with the component parts of the children or the offspring of the matriarchy, etc., which are commonly called in their process of coming into being, nativity, nasi, which means to come to life or to come into being, from which you uh, derive the term commonly used at Midgard, referred to as nations, and nationality. And this is why it's important for people to also have